Let's look at programming our holonomic drive. These are the labels that we're going to use for each of our motors, along with the port that they're going to be connected into. Here's those ports on the Cortex. Looking down the robot, we're going to refer to each of the motors by its position. So this will be the left front motor. And we're going to note when it's going clockwise with a green arrow and counterclockwise with a red arrow. For a remote, what we'd like to have happen is on channel 4, when we take it to the left, it rotates counterclockwise. When we take it to the right, it rotates clockwise. For channel 2, it will be our forward and back. And our channel 1 will be our left and right. We're going to use this matrix right here to uh, help us program later on. I'll show you how that works. So when we want it to rotate in place, and let's say we want it to go clockwise, what we need to have happen is we need our left front motor along with all our other motors to all rotate clockwise. And so we're going to say down here in our coding aspect that a rotation is just the true value coming off of channel 4. And so channel 4, if it's 127, we're going to add 127 here. If we take it the other direction, it's negative 127, we're going to put negative 127 here. When we move forward, um, it's going to act very similarly to other robots, where the left side of our robot is going to go clockwise, and the right side of our robot is going to go counterclockwise. In our programming aspect, what we're going to have happen is we're going to say that our left motors are going to get the true value and our right motors are going to get the inverse value. So these will move clockwise and these will move counterclockwise. When we go to the right, what we're going to see is that our front motors are both going to need to go clockwise and our back motors are both going to need to go counterclockwise. And we're going to note that with both of our front motors being the true value and both of our back motors being the inverse value. How that works with our programming is that when we try to rotate and we want to go counterclockwise, we're going to set our channel 4 to negative 127. So we've taken this, we've toggled it all the way to the left. We're going to write down whatever our value is. So this would be counterclockwise. And we're going to write in that true value into the rotation. And so when we add all three of these together, 0 plus 0 plus negative 127, I get a counterclockwise value of negative 127. I get the same for each of the other ones. And so what would happen is each of my motors in this situation would all be going counterclockwise, causing my robot to rotate counterclockwise. When we want it to rotate clockwise, we're going to set channel 4 to 127. We're going to plug that 127 in, that true value, in for our rotation, and we're going to add everything together, and we get our clockwise set up there for 127, causing the robot to rotate uh, clockwise. It does get a little bit more complicated with our forward and back and our left and right. And so when I take channel 2 forward, right, I'm going to have channel 2 set to 127. I'm going to plug in my true value for my left motors of 127 and my inverse values for my right motors of negative 127. We're going to add those together. And what we're going to get is 127 or our clockwise rotation for our left motors and negative 127 or a counterclockwise rotation for our right motors. Similarly, if I'm going to the left, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take channel 1 to negative 127. I'm going to add in my true values in these green spaces and the inverse values in the red and add those together. So here, my left front motor, I'm going to have 0 plus negative 127 plus 0, giving me a negative 127. So my left front motor will be going counterclockwise. My left back motor, when I add these together, I get a clockwise rotation. So it's there. My right front is here, and my right back is clockwise. So the whole robot would go in that direction. Where it gets a little bit more confusing is when we look at it going on a diagonal. And so we're going to have our channel 2, 127, our y direction. We're going to add in the true values for our left motors and our inverse values for our right motors. And then negative 127 for our x direction. And so we're going to add in our true values for our fronts and our inverse values for our backs. And we're going to add these together. And so our left front motor is going to cancel out because when we take 127, add it to negative 127, add it to 0, 
we get a value of zero. A left back motor, we're gonna add those together and get 254. Our right front motor, we're gonna get uh, negative 127 plus negative 127, giving us a negative 254. And our right back motor is going to be negative 127 plus 127 plus zero equaling zero. What that gives us, so if I look at my left back motor, I'm gonna see that it's going to go um, clockwise, and I'm gonna see that my right front motor is gonna go counterclockwise, and these two motors are gonna be stopped, and so my whole robot will go in that direction. More seasoned programmers with robot C are going to say, well, you can't add a motor value greater than 127 because it's not gonna be received by the motor. Um, that's true, but what robot C does, it actually truncates that value. And so where we have 254 here, it means that it's actually gonna send 127. Where we have negative 254, it means it's gonna actually send negative 127. And so that will work out in that situation. When we want to go through and we wanna program this, we're gonna go into our motion sensor setup in robot C. We're gonna add in our values there. It's gonna develop our pragma right here. And then to program it, we're going to have to look at our reference of our matrix again. So for our left front motor, we're gonna to have to have the true value of channel two, the true value of channel one, and the true value of channel four. For our left back motor, we're gonna have the true value of two, the inverse value of one, the true value of four. Right front is gonna be the inverse of two, the true of one, the true of four. Right back is gonna be the inverse of two, inverse of one, and true of four. To program that, what we have is We've just written down our left front motor, so our motor, saying it's this one. And we're setting it equal to what our channel two value is, plus what our channel one value is, plus what our channel four value is. Whereas for our left back motor, we have channel two. We are adding the inverse, so we're really just subtracting channel one from it, and adding channel four. Our right back is the inverse, so I've got an inverse of channel two. I'm going to add it to channel 1 and add it to channel 4. Our right back motor is going to be the inverse of channel 2 minus channel 1 and add it to channel 4. This should work for you. Now I expect there will be complications when you put it together. Um, right when you get this code set up and you have the robot built, I would actually lift it off the table, so maybe put on books or pop cans or whatever, and I would take it and rotate channel 4 all in the same direction. And so rotate all clockwise, make sure all your wheels are going clockwise. And if they're not, I'd probably change the physical connection between the motor and the motor controller. And what that's going to do is it's going to invert the values. And if we do that both ways, you should have it work out for you. There might be other nuances that you can sort of figure out or have to sort of fight. Um, but I believe overall this should work for you. Um, good luck and I hope it works out.